Welcome to Drinks Coach. This is the last of five vidawines.co.uk episodes where they've supplied me with some very interesting wines. Vida Wines, the new specialist mail order retailer looking after Central Europe, Eastern Europe, Austria, Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey, Moldova, you name it. Um, mining the, the, the last unopened mines of excitement, the new kids from the block in wine. So today we're actually going to do a show on Moldova. Um, that's Moldova, yeah. It's still sort of like kind of lozenge-shaped country, wedged very nicely between Ukraine to the left, uh, to the right, and Romania to the left. Um, both very large winemaking countries in their own right. But is Moldova a big wine producer? Yes, it is. It, it's, it was 12th largest in Europe up until relatively recently. Um, and also during the sort of 90s, I would say, um, I remember the first time I tried some Moldovan wine, and there was a company called the Russian Wine Company who um, had unearthed a load of bottles underneath the Politburo um, offices um, in Moscow. And a lot of the red wines, I believe, were from Moldova originally, and made from things like Saparavi and Cabernet and a few other things. And um, the wines were extraordinary. Um, I remember on my 21st birthday, Dad cooking me uh, some steak tartare, uh, opening a very nice bottle of claret as a treat for me. Um, it was a bottle of Pichon Lalonde, 1978. Nice drink. Probably passed it now, but very good. Um, anyway, we opened a bottle of this wine. This wine came from, I think, Odd Bins, and I paid £7.50 for it. £7.50. And it had written in bio on it, 1963, uh, Saparavi Cabernet. Um, and that's all. Uh, and, and a tiny little stopper, a cork that was yay big, uh, which I think only because of the stillness of the air in the cellars it had actually sealed the wine quite correctly and quite properly um, the wine was extraordinary I mean after about half an hour my father and I couldn't tell the difference between the 750 wine and the wine that would have cost certainly £40 then and now it could certainly be more than that um, so Moldova are they capable of making great wine? they certainly were and it was the darling of the Russian wine industry that the, the fine wines that were drunk by the Soviet Union and all the uh, um, sort of senior figures was wine usually from Moldova. Now, after decollectivization de in 1991, um, things went a bit crazy. Um, Australia, in fact, um, South Court Wines, which were uh, the owner of the great Penfolds in Australia, probably the most famous wine, certainly New World Winery, uh, I can think of anywhere in the world, really. Uh, they sent wine winemakers in, young flying winemakers, people that really wanted to do something special. Uh, and they sent them in and... Uh, it was like the Wild Wild West. There were people using guns, there was um, cash was changing hands. And Moldova was a place which um, was, wasn't a place for doing business in the normal sense. And I think the Penfolds then pulled out, which is a shame. But they saw the enormous potential of the vineyards. So here we have six wines from Moldova. This is the first time I've ever done a talk about Moldova wines. Uh, so thank you, vinawines.co.uk, for giving me the opportunity to do this. There's some cool stuff here. Let's start with this one. This is a white, which I've only ever tasted in competition blind. Never seen a bottle and actually poured it um, to, to give it more consideration. But um, when I judged the International Wine Challenge, which I've done for over a, a quarter of a century now, um, this wine does come up. When I see Viorica written uh, on my sheet, I get quite excited. So Viorica, what is it? Well, actually, it's a cross of two other varieties. Aliatico, a red grape, and Zybo. Another red grape. So this is a white wine that's been created by crossing two red ones. Isn't nature funny? Anyway, it's got a lovely silver colour to it. Not too expensive. It's about £13.50, which I think is bang on for this kind of wine. Mm. It's got a gorgeous smell. If you go to a French market, at the beginning of the melon season in the southwest of France, you have a little Charente melon, or maybe a slightly bigger Galio or Ocean melon. The round ones are really reek. That's, you can smell across a marketplace. You go, oh, where are those melons from? I need to have one. And you cut one open, that smell. Aromatic melon. That's that smell. It's absolutely fantastic. What a lovely nose. And when you put the wine in your mouth, you're expecting more of that melon thing going on. But there is a little bit. It starts off like that. And then turns and twists and there's a bit of a liminess, a tang, really mouth-watering. Almost like apricots. So it's melons on the nose, apricots in the mouth. Absolutely delicious. No one ever know, um, nobody would have tried this before really. I mean, 
This is the first, as I say, the Oracle that I've ever tasted and known that I'm drinking it. So there we go. That's quite delicious. So let's move on to another unusual white grain variety from Moldova. Riton. R-I-T-O-N. Riton. Riton. Vin Albsec. It says in the back. Dry white wine. Well, again, this is a completely new experience for me. I've been told that Riton is a cross between Villard, Villard, which is an old white variety from France, and Gewürztraminer, which we all know is a very spicy, aromatic wine that smells of Turkish delight, light cheese, rose petals, that sort of thing, very exotic. So I wonder what we're going to make of this. Well, funny enough, the Gewürztraminer side of it is played right down. You've got, you're left with that smell of maybe lemon Turkish delight, but it's like a lemon curd, a warm lemon oil smell, which is rather attractive. There is some other fruit there. There's some other citrus, a bit of quince. The palate's lovely. What the, the Gewurz Tremina gives here is not the crazy aromatics that you expect, but it does lend its palate, which is a very textural, soft, very gentle, very easy sensation in the mouth. It's got a lovely mouthfeel. 13.2% alcohol. So it's got proper body. Lovely, gentle, round mouthfeel. I would love to match this with Chinese food and that sort of thing. And at 13.49, <laughs> it's right on the money. You see? No. Okay, right. Uh, moving on. We're going on to a wine now, which I think um, if I say, oh, this is a Moldova variety and it's called Fatashka Regala, you go, oh, hold on a minute, Joe. Isn't Fatashka Regala a Romanian variety? Yes. That's what I said. No, I didn't say that, did I? Because when you look at Romania, when they decided what Romania was, when they gave Romania to Romanians, somebody clearly just got a pen and just went, you can have that bit <laughs> on a map. Cutting into Ukraine, cutting into an area which well, maybe was, was... Put it this way, they, they're very, very similar areas, just divided by geographical lines. On the other side, he went, eh, and then there's Timisoara, the second largest city, in, uh, in Romania, and it's like little Vienna, it, it, because it was a part of old Austro-Hungary. So um, they're all kind of the same. The boundaries have been there forever. Uh, when you look at where the Romanian-Moldovan boundary is, um, it, was, it, was put, it was put there less than 200 years ago. And uh, that boundary, if you rub that boundary out and include Moldova and Romania, you'll see that they actually have an awful lot in common. Um, the, uh, the grape varieties are also quite similar. So there's a grape variety called Fatashka Alba, which means white Fatashka. And it's not seen as being particularly fine, but it's capable of making some solid results. But it makes it kind of a table white wine of quality. Um, when crossed with my favourite white grape variety in the world, uh, largely grown in Slovenia and Hungary, which is a grape variety of ferment, it becomes Fatashka Regala, which means royal Fatashka. Comes this beautiful big bottle, Aurora. I'm not sure if that's particularly woke these days, but it's not that heavy, but it's very grand. Uh, this is a 2019 Fantastic Regala Aurora. 12.5% alcohol, very pale in colour, and only £12.50, which I think is a very reasonable price for anything these days if it's any good. Now, what I can smell is development. This is 2019, uh, we're now sitting quite happily at the end of 2021. So this wine's two years old. And Fantastica Regala, from my, in my opinion, um, is, is best strong. It's really fresh, young and zippy. But when it, it does hold its flavours. And when it gets to this age, you get a slightly different wine. You get a smell of uh, marzipan. It's sort of like a kind of frangipan mix, almost like an amaretto smell. In the palate, there's lots of flavour, lots of tang, crab apple fruit, Custard apple, kind of almost a creamy texture to it. And it does last a long way in the palate. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting. If you wanted to try a Moldova and Fantastica in colour, here is one. Um, but these varieties you have never, never heard of before. I think a little bit more exciting for me. But anyway, there we go. Each to their own. Moving on to this, which is um, the first of some reds. This is made from Merlot. Merlot is French for, uh, it comes from the French La Merle, which is French for blackbird. And um, Merlot 
um, is a great variety, which I think a lot of people either take the mickey out of or absolutely adore. Uh, it's famously very smooth, very easy. Um, I've been criticised for calling Merlot the lift music of great varieties, <laughs> which I think is fair enough. It's very appealing, it's soft, it's supple, but when planted in the right place, it's capable of greatness. When I say right place, there are tiny pockets in the world which do good Merlot. There's Hawke's Bay in New Zealand, a little bit, Washington State maybe, and of course the right bank of Bordeaux, where Pomeroy and Santa Miguel are, where it shines. Now what Merlot likes is a little bit of something else. Again, to use another description, Merlot's like tofu. It gives you lots of texture, but doesn't have that much flavour. If you add a bit of Cabernet Franc to it, that adds the aromas, the taste, the acidity. And then built around this creamy, suave architecture, you can make wines which are really, really ty- stylish. In fact, some of the most expensive wines in the world are basically Merlot. Petris is 100% Merlot. Le Pan is 100% Merlot. These are £1,000 a bottle plus. So, have a look at this wine. It's 310 altitudine, which I assume means it's at 310 metres. That's 1,000 feet. That's quite high for a vineyard. It's certainly as high as continental Beaujolais or the higher vineyards in uh, Ishmael in Turkey, something like that. But this is Votor, um, Merlot Rara Negra. Rara Negra is another red variety which is indigenous to both Romania and Moldova. 14% alcohol. Not, uh, encouragingly, not completely black. It doesn't look over-extracted. You can see through it. Ooh. It's got a lovely spicy, almost sandalwood, bark, cinnamony kind of note over some very pleasant red fruits. Some summer fruit bowl full of um, strawberries with, with sugar and, and raspberries and that kind of thing. It's got a lovely red fruit nose with that little bit of spice. Mmm. Mmm. That's really delicious, actually. 11 quid. Cheapest wine here today. 11.19. 14% alcohol. The wood's a little bit woody. Um, if you like wine with a bit of oak, if you like your Rioja, then have a crack at this. Absolute bargain. Slightly different fruit flavours, but really has a very similar sort of pleasure to drinking a moderate Rioja. So, if you don't like your wines too oaky, avoid. If you like your wines a bit of oak, because they're hard to find these days, this is your chap. Lovely fruit, delicious, well balanced. Put a smile on my face, hasn't it? Okay, so we're moving on to the last two. We're going serious now. This one, which is called Metaphora, which I assume means metaphor, <coughs> it was £23. Okay, £23 quid. What's that by you? Oh, not to be sniffed at, this is a, from Gogu Winery again, which clearly know what they're doing. Mundus Vinnie Gold. They don't hand those out to anyone. So I'm feeling quite confident this wine's going to be at least palatable, if not very good indeed. Um, it's made from Cabernet Sauvignon. You probably can't see that at the bottom. In time they're writing, it says Cabernet Sauvignon. Saparavi, which is a great variety, which is very famously from Georgia. The Bethlehem of wine. That was one of the first wine recipes were ever discovered some 4,000 BC. And for Tashka Negra, which is a Romanian slash Moldovan variety, which has some dark spicy plum fruit. So those things mixed all together sound like they might make quite a nice three tenors sort of band, really, because you've got the fruits of Cabernet, you've got Saperari giving a lot dark colour, some perfume, but some real structure, some, some, some iron, some firmness, some dryness to the wine, which sometimes it needs. And also you've got the Fetashka Negra giving it some indigenous spice, some local, uh, sort of like Romanian Moldovanus. So a lovely colour, beautiful colour. Well, we're getting serious now. This is 2018. The last one was 2019. Clearly, time has been kind to this wine. It's really opening up. Nice and spicy on the nose. Mm. Tastes like a generous cape blend, like a pinotage blend from South Africa. Very fine. There's some real subtlety and some real sophistication there. Um, and I think the 20 quid isn't too hot for this wine. I was wondering what a 20 pound Moldova red wine would taste like. And now I know that tastes like 20 quid's worth. There's nothing wrong with that at wine at all. It's fantastic. Lovely for Christmas. I would drink that with roast lamb, roast pork, or like a nice plate full of salamis and things like that, salami and cheese, which is what you would do in this part of the world anyway. 
Right, bring us on to our last one, Illustro from Photor. Quite the label. This is a 2015 Cavani Merlot. Now, Photor, uh, this says them about Fabricat in Moldova, but um, Photor make a lot of indigenous wines. But this is to prove to people they've got the skill set to make really world class wine. Now, I had dinner a few weeks ago, and this was served to me with Spag Bol. I can't tell you how good this wine is. Now, excited I'm about trying it again. Let's have a look. This has got a lovely colour, beautiful, slightly developed. It looks like a Stellenbosch Cabernet Sauvignon, maybe something from Argentina, something like that. It's got a lovely, rich, broad colour to it. Absolutely gorgeous nose. The smell of slight pine, pepper. It's a bit balsamic, which is probably showing the sign that it's starting to reach maturity. Six years old, which is a bit of a treat in its own right. This is going to save you about £27. So I'm thinking, what do I get for £27 elsewhere? Is this a novelty, buying a Moldovan wine at £27? I'm quite happy to pay an extra fiver if a Moldovan wine is really brilliant, just to show people they can do it. Um, but does this offer international global value? I'd say yes. That's absolutely delicious. What can I say? That with a rack of lamb? Oh, this tastes like premium Stellenbosch Cab, which is £30. Premium Cabernet from Chile, £30. This is the, that's the price you pay for this. If you wanted to buy wine this good from a very warm vintage in Bordeaux, £60. So, it's true, Moldova is still making amazing Cab Merlots amazing Bordeaux lookalikes for what appears to be about half the price. So, let's have a look again. We've got Viorica, made from Zybel and Aliatico grape varieties mixed together. Beautiful, melony fruit, really fascinating, really interesting, really worth trying. Uh, a, a real curio over Christmas, but I think that'd be lovely in spring as well. Um, then the Right on Wine, which is made from uh, Converse Tremina and uh, Villard Blanc. The wine that didn't smell like Gewurz, but has lovely, generous, round tastes. A lovely, limey, lime curd nose. Ooh. It's just very satisfying, lovely. Fetashka Gala, 2019. Uh, cross between Fetashka Alba and Ferment. Um, one in a slightly mature style, if you like that sort of thing. Then we've got 310 metre altitude, Merlot Rara Negra from Foetor, who made this last wine. We've got this one, which was a lovely blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Georgian Saparabi, and the Moldovan Fetashka Negra. Um, what can I say? That was also pretty special, I have to say. Um, worth 20 quid of anybody's money. Well, well, well. I didn't really go into regions with Moldova. If I don't know the regions, you don't. So <laughs> uh, let's maybe do a deep dive on that another time. Because it'd be interesting to see what styles of wine come from which parts. But for now, isn't it encouraging to know that Moldova makes such good, interesting and different wines? I think it is. See you next time.